what's up what's good what's popping what's cracking what's percolating what's really good in the hood so um with that being said i had a very interesting conversation with a patriot um a u.s patriot on sunday which basically left the patriot speechless and the conversation that we had was one revolving around protests that are occurring when the national anthem and the flag is laying horizontal to the ground. What I'm going to do, attempt to do today, is to give my brothers and sisters some insight on how to have a conversation with a patriot, which will leave them speechless. So said patriot was on a comment, social media and everything like that, and the patriot basically stated that these black athletes get paid absorbent amount of dollars they should go back to their neighborhoods and invest protesting doing the national anthem and american flag is disrespectful to the troops and that essentially police kill white people on average more than they do um, black people and what are we doing about black on black crime now to my fellow brothers and sisters what i say to you is this to have a conversation with a patriot or a white nationalist, you must take certain things into consideration. I want to say it's probably 35%, maybe 45% of white people that really don't give a damn about our plight. Keep that in mind because the next thing you need to remember is that no white person can relate to you being black they don't know black experiences so they don't understand your emotional setting on a day-to-day -day basis they just don't get it because they're looking through the eyes of what is normal to them which prior to say um this awakening that has grasped our culture our ethnicity in the past few years we ourselves identified it as normalcy no more so just sit back relax this won't take too long what i first did was i removed my my emotions from it anger um resentment uh embarrassment i just removed the, the emotions away from it and i dealt with it from a humane aspect i even took the racial to a degree i took the the racial aspects the racial undertones out of it and i asked the gentleman a series of questions because what he wanted to do was after I responded to what his initial post was he asked me about black on black crime to which I responded to him that you know what there is black on black crime you're absolutely right but there's also white on white crime Asian on Asian crime and Latino on Latino crime the neighborhoods that you stay in are the neighborhoods that you tend to rob so if African Americans stay in a particular neighborhood more than likely the people that are robbing from them are black people just like if you have a group of white people staying around each other the people that are robbing them are more likely white and then I addressed the 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 police killing white people and I want to make sure I'm very very clear when I say this what I told him was is that a trained police officer killing an unarmed civilian is wrong see I didn't say black because based on the amount of training that police officers have there's no reason for an unarmed civilian to be killed by police officers and then I attacked it from this from this uh, viewpoint if there was not an issue with unarmed African Americans being killed by police officers why do we see it on every news channel it's not see you can't tell me that it's on liberal networks because it shows up on conservative networks as well now the person is defeated because I'm not approaching it from a racial aspect they see the news just like we see the news they just choose to look the other way because it's not presented to them the way the media should present it to them and then I asked him about the American flag and the US flag code and I asked him 
Was he equally upset when he sees pictures of people wearing the American flag as clothing? When you go into a Walmart or you go into a Target and you see the flag-based bikinis, flag-based uh, swimming shorts for guys, um, flag-based button-down shirts that we wear during the 4th of July. Are you equally upset then? Are you as equally upset when you look at the flag laying horizontal to the ground when the U.S. flag code specifically says it's not supposed to lie that way? Or are you just picking and choosing what it is that you want to be upset about? Then I address the question of when you say find your own time to protest, I ask myself, well, when is the right time to protest? Because we've been protesting since slavery we were told back during the civil war this is not the right time you're still a slave we were told during jim crow that this is not the right time go around to the back when rosa parks uh refused to give up her seat we were told that that was not the right time when we sat down at the lunch counters we were told that's not the right time. <laughs> when we wanted to get our rights to vote, we actually had people killed as a message to us that that was not the right time. During the civil rights era, we were told that was not the right time. So when is the right time is what I asked him. I said, because we've been trying to have this conversation with white America for decades over 400 years and there is never a good time so now you don't get to tell us anymore because shout out to my brothers and sisters that's that's holding it down doing what they're supposed to be doing but we're not going away silent at night we understand it's 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 it's, it's, it's difficult out here we're tired of it so the uncomfortable conversation that your forefathers didn't want to have your granddad and your dad didn't want to have you're now going to have it. You're going to have to face it and you're going to have to deal with it because we're not going to shut up anymore. So I told him, I said, now you're going to have to have the conversation because I, re I refuse to be silent about it. The gentleman couldn't respond. He could. And the reason why he couldn't is because I hit him with facts. I hit him with facts that were written down by the most part, by people who look like him. Historians, United States historians who look like him. Not United States historians who look like me, even though we do know that there are some that look like me. So I hit him with facts. I removed the, the, the for the most part, the racial epithets from it. We just talked humanity. And he grew stone cold silent. This dude was so frustrated. Y'all, some of y'all, I've been told this before. I'm very, uh, what's the word I want to look for? I really think it's an insult, but I'm very well spoken. I don't, I'm very articulate. You know what the hell I'm supposed to be at the age of 49? I, I just don't know. I, I, this is me. But when you have conversations with them along these lines, because let's be clear, I'm not saying that the brothers and sisters who were killed weren't breaking the law. Whatever they were doing, those were nonviolent crimes. And any American that is breaking the law and it's a nonviolent crime should be taken into custody. They should be. There's no reason why they're not taken into custody. I don't care what anybody says. Uh, if you do your homework and you do your research, you can pull up the type of training that any police department goes through and you will understand these are some professionals. These aren't these aren't these are amateurs. These are professionals. So there's no reason for it. But when you hit them with that type of knowledge, when you hit them with those type of specifics, these so-called patriots, so-called white nationalists. At that point in time, they have no choice but to reveal their true character. 
this gentleman who posted and I commented and he commented and then I commented with nothing but facts he deleted his he deleted his post I found that to be very very interesting he deleted his post and maybe I'm giving myself too much credit here but I want to say that he I want to believe that he deleted his post because what he did not get from me he didn't get the race baiting from me. he didn't get the name calling from me and he did not get the anger from me all he got were facts facts that could easily be fact checked as my friend Kevin Dawson likes to say they could easily be fact checked and not be dispelled so that's my advice to my brothers and sisters going forward when you have a conversation with Caucasian Americans one understand that I want to say two out of five are not gonna give a damn about what you talk about they just don't care and they will reveal their lack of concern in their response but even when you talk about the remaining three out of five they still don't know what it means to be black they don't understand that on a daily basis you walk around with rage boiling underneath your skin because of how society views you they don't even understand what that means because in their world what goes on is normal <laughs> so when you break down the facts and you hit them upside the head it's kind of like what was that movie how to be a player they they will either repent or they will retreat that's my time I'm out I love y'all each and every last one of y'all regardless of what your political affiliation is regardless of what your ethnicity is regardless of what your religious beliefs are we all came from one person at the end of the day that's why I try my best not to get caught up in it I wear this band on my arm this one right here as a symbol of what's really really important and what's really really important is that we love one another and that we live for one another if we could just understand and do that and grasp that we wouldn't have the issues that we have going on today that's my time i'm out peace